I'm going to read this again. And y'all find your place now with me in Psalm of Solomon. We're going over there here shortly. The Bible said in, in verse number 21, Submit yourselves uh, one to another in the fear of the Lord. One another, that means both of us, husband and wives, has to fear or uh, submit ourselves unto God in the fear of the Lord. Amen? First of all, let me say this. We are to honor God above anything. Amen? I'm just being honest with you. Uh, we, uh, wives, you got to honor God above your husband. Amen? Uh, now, you can say what you want to. Uh, people says, well, they're under the husband. Listen, God's over the husband. Amen? And we got to honor God because he is the creator of all. Amen? Because if we're honoring God, we'll fall under the place where we ought to with our husband. Amen? Because I'll say this to you tonight. There's some husbands that's not honoring God, and it's hard for the women uh, that's married to a husband that's not following God to follow them. Are y'all women tonight? Amen? I'm just being honest with you tonight. And you say, well, uh, we still got to do that. Listen, if a man is taking you down the wrong road, I'm here to tell you, you can't follow that. Okay? You can't follow that. You cannot uh, submit yourselves under something that's not godly. Okay? And, and you say, well, I, I know I, I feel a little kickback from some, but I'm telling you better get in the Word of God and read it. Amen? And line up with what's right because you've got to get right with the Word of God. Amen? And, and this is where we are. The Bible said in verse number 22, it said here, it says, wives, submit unto your uh, your Yourselves unto your own husband. It says, as unto the Lord. In other words, your own husband, not to somebody else's, but to your own husband. Amen. As unto the Lord, because when you have a, a godly home, you ought to thank God for a godly home. Amen. Husband and wife, thank God for a godly husband. Amen. I, I, I lived in a home that where, uh, with my mom and daddy, that where it was not the same. Amen. Uh, it was not all the way uh, uh, equally yoked there in, in, in through the years. Hallelujah. But I know what it's like to walk there. But I also tell you this tonight, but God will be there for you all the time, every time, and never let you down. Amen. I'm, ain't you glad of that tonight? Praise the Lord. And the Bible goes on as it talks about this, and, and he says this. It said, for it said for the husband is the head of the wife. Now listen, we all know how that works. The Bible talks about the husband is the head of the house, and we know that. But let me say this to you tonight. When he talks about that, he's not talking about the wife to be a slave. Amen. A wife is not your slave tonight, husband. I'm just being honest with you. Uh, they're your helpmate. Amen. And what God's given you and put beside you to be a helpmate, uh, not for us to run over, not for us to take down, but that we can uh, love them because the Bible's going to tell us in the next verse down here, we got to love them like Christ loved the church. Hallelujah. And that's a whole lot tonight. Amen. We're going to see that in just a little bit, how God loved the church. Amen. And, and just a few scriptures over, the Bible goes on. As it says this now, he says, uh, husband, uh, it said the husband in, in verse number, uh, finish it, uh, uh, in verse number 23, it said, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. My friend, we ought to, the husbands, you ought to be willing to lay your life down for your wife. You say what you want to. You ought to be willing to lay your life down for your wife tonight. Amen. And that's what Christ did uh, for the church. Amen. Uh, he done that. He laid his life down. The Bible goes on as it talks about this. Uh, it said, and give himself for it. Amen. And, and give him, in, in verse number uh, 20, uh, in, in verse number 25, husband, love your wife. Listen, even as Christ has loved the church and give himself for it. Hallelujah. That goes to tell you right there how we're supposed to do. Amen. How we're supposed to love our wives. How wives are supposed to love our husband and do all this. The Bible goes on to say uh, down here in verse number 24. Uh, uh, in, in verse, uh, is that where? No, I'm in verse number, uh, in verse number 26. It says, uh, he that, it said that he might uh, sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Amen. In other words, that uh, doing everything that we need to do what's right to make your home right uh, in the word of God. Amen that we have to live by the Word of God to make us who we are. Listen, I, I, I've been there. I've seen husbands look at their wives and say, you're going to do as I tell you to do and all that. That's not a relationship married rightly dividing the Word of God. Hallelujah. That's not true. That's not the way it should be. We are we are together. We are partners. God has put us together. I, I like what uh, 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 oh, over in, uh, when we've done the kingdom man and I like what Tony Evans said. He said that we lost a, a 
rib to have a woman, but when we got the wife back, we got a rib back. Amen? And plus more. So understand they're a helpmate to us, and, and they're somebody that brings to the table more than what, or, or, or what we couldn't bring, they bring to the table. Hallelujah. It's what they do. So understand that. The Bible goes on to say this, and in verse number 27, uh, he says this. He said that he might uh, uh, present uh, to himself a uh, a glorious uh, a glorious church. It says uh, not having spot nor wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Hallelujah. That's what God's looking for as a church, and, and that's what we ought to be looking for in a husband or a wife. Listen, I know we're not perfect. I know people are going to say, preacher, we're not perfect. We're not Christ, but we are to strive to be Christ-like. Amen? And as we are, are living and, and, and bringing our family, teaching our family, and teaching our, 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 our when we got our wives, and, and we'll come together, we are to love them, and we are to, uh, uh, our home ought to be like the church. Amen? It ought to give an example. When we raise our children, our children ought to be able to look at mama and daddy and see a picture of the church there and learn to grow up in that and know how to love one another. Amen? How Christ loved us. And as they look at their daddy, and I've seen folks that love their wives so much uh, that would do anything for them. Amen? I'm talking about that would go out of the way and, and do things that, that nobody, nobody else would do. Amen? And that's the way it should be. I, I'm here to tell you, that's what Christ done for the church. And as our children are raised up in that kind of home or our grandchildren or whatever, my friend, they ought to admire that. That when they grow up, they'll say, I want to be like that. Hallelujah. That's what they ought to be like. And so as we see all this and how God is talking and wants us to do this and, and get right, the Bible says, so are men to love their wives as their own bodies. Amen? As their own bodies. You ask how much you'll love your wife as your own body. Boy, y'all quiet. Amen? But it's good stuff. It's good stuff. Because it's what God is telling us. And I want to talk about that. I want to preach about that perfect love and, and that love that never, never separates. That love. Now, listen, I can go back and you go talk to Tammy. she tell you a lot of mistakes I made. Amen? Talk to a lot of husbands in here and your wives tell you a lot of mistakes you made. But surely somewhere along the way they can tell you some good things. Surely they can tell you some things that we've done was right. And some things that we've done Christ-like. Listen, every one of us bear the flesh. Wives, you bear the flesh. Husbands, we bear the flesh. And sometimes the Bible says because we don't walk in the Spirit, we mess up. Amen? Wives mess up, husbands mess up, and we get all messed up. Amen? And we get bent out of shape and we do things. But listen, I'm telling you right now, we have to go back and we have to make things right. Amen? I, I'm telling you, I've seen husbands and wives, and, and, and I'll be honest to tell you, I've done it, and, and you've done it probably somewhere down the road, and, and how the Bible says don't let your the sun go down on your wrath when you get upset and you get mad. How many of us ever got mad and want to sleep on the couch most of the time the husband, amen I'll go sleep on the couch and, and the wife go to bed and the next thing you know you both went to bed mad, I have been there and done that, y'all, I'm, I'm being honest I ain't got no other hands in the house uh, but come on now, praise the Lord we've all had done that kind of stuff, amen but it's not uh, like we ought to do, amen, the Bible says when that takes place, uh, we ought to not let the sun go down on our wrath uh, before we make the, make men's how we ought to, amen, I can can't help that Tammy's always wrong when we're in a conversation and things go bad. Amen. I can't help that. Praise the Lord. Uh, but in, anyway, uh, uh, I'm just telling you, we got to know what's right and what's wrong. Amen. Praise the Lord. I, I'll go home. I'll, I'll mend that for before dark. Hallelujah. Uh, praise the Lord. Uh, so understand tonight, this is what we are. And this is what God expects for me and you tonight. Listen, before a church can be healthy, the families has got to be healthy. You say what you want to. You can build a church and you can build. Uh, this is why I think God's laid it on my heart to do this. Because you can build a, a church. You can have people and you can have the fellowship. And you can come in here and you can have all that. But until you got healthy families, you ain't building on nothing but sinking sand. Are you hearing what I'm telling you tonight? You'll build on sinking sand oh, because everybody comes to church on their best behavior. Come on. There's only some of the bold folks that, that really don't care that'll show up and mess up a service. I'm being honest with you. 
I've seen some folks come in here, man, you know they was mad when they come in and they hindered the whole service. Amen? But some folks can hide it a little better than others. But listen, God already knows what's behind the scene. Are you hearing me tonight? you got to build on the foundation that God started, not trying to rebuild the foundation on what we're building on. We've got to have a healthy church from the foundation. And what is the foundation? It's Jesus Christ. No doubt about that. But when people come in, my friend, you have, you, uh, when you ever know when people start in a church, we call them charter members and, and stuff like that as they grow and, and you get growing on. And you got those faithful members that you know and this and that and other. But you got folks that come in, and my friend, that they're not exactly what they say they are. They one thing sitting on the pew, and they're another thing sitting on the couch. <laughs> Are you understanding what I'm telling you tonight? And that right there will never work by building a church. But what's going on on the couch, it ought to be going on on the pew. And what's going on on the pew ought to be going on on the couch. Hallelujah. I'm just telling you the truth tonight. And that's the way we ought to build because we got to build a healthy foundation in the church and build on that foundation. I'm not saying that we're not going to have disagreements and we're not going to have an intent fellowship. Amen. But sometimes we have those things. But my friend, listen, we can learn to agree to disagree and love your husband, love your wife, and, and move on down the road and not, and not be a disaster. Come out of that. All right. All right. I wish the church was full. I'm being honest. I wish the church was full because this is what makes a healthy church. When you look at somebody and you have a, a family that's built in a church, and a lot of them look in here and they say, well, preacher, I'm not married. don't matter. You still have a relationship with God. People know your relationship with God. For you, they're not married. You still are accountable for your actions. Being honest with you, you say here you have a relationship. You are, you are still married. You are, if you're a child of God, you're married. You're married to the bridegroom. You are the bride, and you're married to the bridegroom. And what you do in secret or what we do everywhere else, we're going to give an account for it, whatever we do. And there again, what we do on our couch or what we do on our spare time, what we do out there, we ought to be doing what we're doing on the pews. Hallelujah. And sharing the right way and living the right way before our life. Somebody's looking up to you. Say what you want to. Somebody's looking up to you. And so as we see this, and again, as we see, I'm going to read this last verse again. As it says this, it says, So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. Amen? That loveth himself. And the Bible goes on to say that man love himself. And we ought to love our wife that way. Amen? Sometimes, men, we allow ourselves to get in the way of the love of our wife. Say what you want to. I've one of them. Been there. Done that. But won't you turn with me over to first uh, over into Psalm of Solomon. Psalm of Solomon. <laughs> Boy, it's quiet up in here tonight, Brother Charles. <laughs> Man, I'm going home with some of y'all. <laughs> I'm going to see what y'all doing at the house. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I know what you do when I show up. Oh, you're going to preach your be quiet. Be quiet. Sit over there and don't say nothing. <laughs> Pick your broke plates up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. <laughs> Come on. Come on now. Praise the Lord. I'm just telling you, listen, God is real, and God wants to have this thing. He wants a, he wants a solid foundation that he started to continue. And to do that, it's all built on love. Listen, when God started and created everything, he built it on love. Now, we can say what we want to. God is a jealous God. God is a, he has a, he's a God of wrath, and he is. But listen, he first offered love before he gave wrath. Are you hearing me? He offered love before he had to share, before he had to bring wrath into the picture. It's the love that what brings wrath and on upon him because he loves us so much. He loved us so much. So we're going to see this in second uh, in the second chapter of Psalm of Solomon. Y'all there just say praise the Lord. Well, this is some good stuff right here if we get in this. And y'all to read this whole chapter. 
Matter of fact, you ought to be read the whole uh, book of Psalm Solomon. It's a love story. That's what it is. It's a love story. You can read it. It's a love of what it is. It's a love of, of the bride and Christ. It's a love of uh, of God and the, and the bride and the bride, the bridegroom and the and the bride. So as we write this, we understand that we a lot of people look at it and say it was a love story that, that was written here between Psalm of Solomon uh, and, and his, his women. But I couldn't tell you it was a story written from the church to God. Amen. Let me say this. Every word that's written in this word was inspired by God. Everything is written in a Psalm of Solomon. God ordained it and said it's good. It's good. It's not a vulgar, it's not a, anything bad in it at all. It is good. Amen? It's good. And so you could read this book, but I'm going to pick up verse number one in chapter two. The Bible said, now this is the bridegroom talking. And I want you to understand that. The bridegroom's talking. He said, I am the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valley. That's what God says I am. The bride picks in and says, and the lily among thorns, as the lily among thorns, so is my love among the daughters. Remember, the daughters represent the church, the daughter, the daughters that he's talking about here because we have the, the thorns and we have the lilies among the thorns. They're the daughters of, uh, uh, of ungodly, unruly people. Amen. Uh, uh, of, the, of the people here. But the, 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 ch the daughter he's talking about is the daughter is a church. Amen. It's who he's talking about. The Bible goes on to say this in the scripture. It says, so is my love among the daughters. It said, as the apple tree among the trees. Now, is the, is the bride begin to say this? You got to understand that. This is us ought to be talking to the Lord. Amen. This is what we ought to be saying. This is what the church ought to be doing. This is where the bride ought to be talking. And this is how we ought to be talking like. Amen. It says here, it says, as the apple tree is among the trees of the woods. Amen. So is my beloved among the sons. In other words, talking about they ain't no other tree like them. Amen. There's nothing else like my God. Hallelujah. There's nothing else like him that I can love no better than him. Amen. And that's what we need to understand that. And the Bible goes on. It said, I sat uh, down under, the, uh, under his shadows. It says, uh, with great delight. In other words, uh, that's under the presence of God. Amen. I sat down under his shadows because he loves me that much. And he is not, he's like anything, he's not like anything else in the in the forest. He's different. My God's different than anything. Are y'all one with me tonight? And I thank God I can sit down under his shadows and I can delight in him. Hallelujah. I can delight in him. And the word goes on. It says here, it says, and, and his fruit was sweet uh, uh, to my taste. Hallelujah. Can any of the bride in the house say hallelujah? Praise the Lord. I'm telling you, he is sweet to my taste. Amen. I, uh, the, the bridegroom, I know we sit around husbands and our, our, our men folk look around. Think, we talk about a bridegroom. But listen, we talking about God. Hallelujah. We talking about the bride of Christ. We're the bride of Christ. He's the bridegroom. I, he's the best thing that ever happened to me. He's the, what I've tasted of him has been good. And the, the, the things that I've experienced of him has been good in my life. Life. And I'm telling you, he first loved me, but he's taught me how to love him back. And that's what these scriptures are going to tell us tonight, how we are to love back, how we are to give him. Because, listen, he's proved his love to me and you. He proved that up on the Calvary's cross. God, he laid down his life. He shed his blood for me and you. How do we prove our love? By putting him on the throne where he belongs and telling the world what it means to me and you tonight. Are you with me? Hallelujah. The Bible goes on to say he brought me uh, to his banquet house. He said, and his banner over me was love. Boy, his word was just all over me with love. He brought me to the church house. And I'm talking about, and his love's just been all over us. It's the, it's the bride's talking and, and saying this. And the Bible goes on and says in verse number five, it says, save me, uh, uh, save me with uh, uh, fi uh, flagons. It says, comfort me with apples. Amen. It said, for I am sick of love. Now, that when you look at that, you say, I'm sick of love. How many of us ever looked at somebody and said they love sick? That's what that means. 
That's the way it should have been. That's the way it should be interpreted. Is there love sick? Listen, because why? We ought to be that much in love with Jesus. We ought to be that much in love with Christ. And we ought to love him that much because he loved us that much. The Bible says, listen to this. It said, his left hand is under my head, and his right hand doeth embrace me. Boy, that's love, ain't it? Husbands, I'm telling you, we can go back to this book and see how we ought to treat our bride. I'm being honest tonight, amen, all this teaching us how to treat our bride because this is how uh, the, the, the bridegroom t uh, uh, treats the church, amen, how he treats me and you tonight. Do you not know that sometimes you say, well, uh, now listen, they, uh, we, 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 they, our, 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 church, our wives ain't like the church. Well, they should be, amen, and I come to tell you, we ought to treat them the same same way that Christ treats the church and, and we ought to embrace them. We ought to hold them up. He said, I put my one hand under the head and the other, what did he say here? He said, I put my left hand under the head and the right hand uh, it said, do it, embrace them. Amen. I charge you, O daughter of Jerusalem. It said, uh, uh, it said by the uh, rose, it said uh, here that by the, uh, by the hand, by the hands, amen, of the fields, it said that she stood uh, stir not up, it said, nor wake my love until he's pleased. Amen. Anything we ought to do ought to please him. Anything we do ought to please the Father. Don't do anything that would not displease him. That's what we ought to do. Boy, I love in verse number eight. Verse number eight says this. Now listen, still the bride still talking. It said, the voice of my beloved. <laughs> It said, Behold, he cometh leaping, leaping up on the mountains. That's my, that's my Lord. That's my Lord. He's always present. He's there. He's, listen, God ain't walking around here with his hand drawn back with a sword ready to whoop you. That's what a lot of people think. So every time I turn around, you know, I, 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 he's coming. He's going to correct us. He's going to whoop us with a run. No, we ought to be walking where we can love on us. Amen? Where he can love on us. And, and as the Bible said here, it said the voice, it said, uh, it said the, the voice of my beloved, it says, behold, it's coming and leaping up on the mountain, skipping up on the hills. Amen? Boy, that's what my God can do. Praise the Lord. He can do that. The Bible said, my beloved is like a, a roar of a, of a young heart. Amen? It said, behold, he uh, standeth behind our walls. It said, he looketh, it said, forth at the uh, windows. It said, and showeth himself through the lattice. Amen. I'm telling you, that's what my God does. He's always present. He's looking. He's loping. He's there. No matter what's going on, he sees what's going on with us. And he's right there with us. He's there for us. And we look sometime and think, where is he at? He's always present with me and you tonight. Always present with me and you tonight. When you think you're alone, you think you're by yourself. You think you have nobody around. Jesus is right there. Leaping up on the hills, not doing these things. The Bible said here in verse number 10, My beloved, speak, and said unto me, Arise up, my love. <laughs> Hallelujah. How many times God ever had to get me like that because sometimes we felt so unlovable. We felt like we was at the bottom. We felt like we couldn't do this or that. But I tell you, when our sweet spirit of God come running through like a flood, you hear me? I, when you felt like there, there was no hope, you felt like it was all said and done. All of a sudden, in the Word of God, it says here, it said, in my love, it says, speak and said unto me, arise up, my love. He said here, my, it said, my, uh, my fair one. Amen. Amen. And it said, and come away. It said, and come away. In verse number 11, it says, for lo, the winter is past and the rain is over and gone. Amen. In other words, it's going to be time for you to get up and shine and walk out and let me show the world how much you are to me, what you mean to me. And it's time to rise, quit hiding, come out of the come out of the holes. I want you to be seen. I want you to listen. And they was talking here, and you go look at her. He was talking about his Solomon told like a, like a, a, a woman and a man talking. He said, talking about how beautiful she was. And he wanted her to be seen and to see how what God had done. Listen, church, it's time for the church to shine and come out and be seen what God's done in your life up through the years. Hallelujah. And what God has made out of you and what God has made out of me tonight. Husband and wife, the same way. 
what God has made out of us, what he's making out of us. It's a daily progress of what we're making, what God's making in us. The word of God goes on as he talks about this. In the scripture, he said, the flowers appear on the earth. The times of singing of birds has come. And the voice of the turtles, it says, uh, is heard in our land. Which I'm talking about singing and pretty music of the birds and all this going on. The Bible said the fig trees put forth her green figs. And the vines with tender grapes give a good smell. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. Amen? Arise, my love. You know, we sang that song. What is that song? It's got that, Arise, my love. I can't even remember uh, which one it is. But I'm telling you, God tells us. He's talking to us. Arise, my love. So I want to think of that so many times, how we're in the valleys and how we're down and how we get so down and depressed and out. But God comes skipping on the mountains <laughs> and come to rescue us and say, Arise, my love. Arise. Ain't y'all glad of that today? I'm so thankful. The Bible said, oh, it says, my dear doves that are in the cliffs of the rocks. It said, in the, uh, in the secret place of the stairs, let me see thy countenance. Let me hear thy voice. For sweet is the voice, and thy countenance is comely. Amen. God's looking at every one of us. He wants to see who we are, what we're thinking of him. I want to ask you a question. Do you think of God the way God thinks of you? Amen? Do we think of God the way we, God thinks of us? This is how much God loves us. This is how much God, this is what God wants for us. I know we sit and we, we read and we think all the time that God's the God of Ralph and God's this. God's the God of love. I told you again, love is what brung wrath. The foundation was built on love. And we go back and everybody knows John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Matter of fact, over in 1 John says this. It talks about how that the, that the children of Israel, how the children had left their first love. Amen. Walked away from it. I want you to think about this. There ain't nobody else going to love you this much. Are you hearing me? There's nobody else going to love you this much. There's nobody else going to take care of you like this. There ain't nobody else going to come to you and do all that God's done for me and you, and he does it every day. And you say, well, I, you know, I don't see him. It don't matter where you see him. I feel him. Amen. Every day God has proved himself to me. Amen. Every day God has proved himself to you. Whether you realize that or not, God has proved himself to you and showed you how mighty that he is and how much he loves you. Amen. To allow you to breathe another breath. Do you realize and I realize we're breathing his air? Amen. We're breathing his air. Amen. He he created that. And that's how much God loved us to allow us to do that. And that's how much we ought to love him back and, and do that. Husbands, love your wife. Wives, love your husband. That we'll see this and we can build on the foundation that God started and have a, a great and mighty church. Hallelujah. That's what God's asking us. Praise the Lord. He tells us all these things. He goes on. He says this. Listen. As he goes on, he says this here. He says in verse number 15, he said, take us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines. He said, for our vines have tender grapes. In other words, God cares about everyone. Everyone. As he talks about the fox, they come out and they rob the vine. God knows every grape that's lost. He's talking about me and you. Amen. As he goes on to say this in the scripture, he says here, he says, and take the fox and the little foxes that spoil the vine. For our vines have tender grapes. In verse number 16, my, my, he says, my beloved is mine. Amen. In other words, it ain't the foxes. Amen. It's not theirs. It's not the prey. It's not the ones that come out and rob their mind. I tell you right now, that's the love of God. Amen. I'm telling you, sometimes in my life, the enemy has come in and boy, he has tried to mess up. He's come into your life, trying to mess you up. But I think 
thank God he's run to the rescue. He's come on the scene. He said, I come to tell you he's not yours. He's not yours. They've been bought with a price. He belonged to me. Hallelujah. How many times have God come on the scene and drove Satan's the devils away from us because we was his? I tell you right now, we have an adversary and Satan and all his demons try their best to come in and spoil what God has started. But I come to tell you, we talked about a verse yesterday that God said nothing can pluck you out of my hands. Ain't you glad of that today? That nothing can pluck me out of his hand. He loved me that much. He loved me enough. And he said, hey, I come to tell you they are mine. Hallelujah. They're mine. They're mine. Husbands, you look at your wife, so you're mine. The enemies and things come our way to try to come in and spoil and mess up. I'm telling you, listen, we need to take pride in what God's given us. Understand that. Listen to me. The Satan comes more than in different forms and something. Listen, a lot of time we think about this. We think about how another man's going to come get our wives. But I'm going to tell you something. He comes in a lot more forms than a man. Satan will come in a lot of ways to try to do a lot of things. Matter of fact, if you ain't careful, man, he'll use you. He'll use you to mess it up. I'm being honest with you. He'll get into us and he'll use us and he'll try to mess up something that God's put together and God's took. And as we do that because we're not obedient, we ain't listening to the Lord, we're not following God, doing what God said, we allow the enemies to come in and mess up. I've seen it many times. I've seen it many times. The Word of God goes on and it says this. And I'm going to close shortly. The Word of God goes on and it says here again. It said, my beloved is mine. It said, I, it said, and I am his. Amen? I am his. And the Bible says, he that fadeth, uh, he that fadeth uh, uh, among the lilies. Amen? It said, until the day breaketh and the shadows flee away. Turn, my beloved, and be thou like a roar of a young heart upon the mountains of better. How, how you pronounce that? Amen? Praise the Lord. That's what God wants us to be like. God's got a plan for mine and your life. God's told us how he expects us to love him. Through the scripture, and you can go on and on and reading what God is, how God is, is loved through this whole a book of Psalm of Solomon. It's what God has done for us and how God has teached us and how we're to love. First of all, the first scripture that I read, how we love one another. How we are to cling to one another. How we are to be Christ-like with one another. Amen? That's how much God loves us tonight. He loves us that much. I love to go back in verse 1 again. Verse 1 of chapter 2 said, I am the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valley. Ain't you glad? I am the rose of Sharon. In other words, what he's telling us, I didn't say we'd be perfect, and we're going to walk through some valleys. We're going to walk through some desert place, but here be the rose of Sharon.